Okay everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make the best battery cable ever for your vehicle. All right, but before we do that, I need to explain to you about battery cables and what manufacturers do. Now here I got here, of course, I, of course I got a set of fuses here. So you're wondering, why, why am I showing you some fuses when this is supposed to be a video about battery cables? Because this is the simplest way I can explain this. Now we got four fuses here. We got a five amp, a 15 amp, a 20 amp, and a 30 amp. Now, what you want to do is pretend that this is battery cables. Now, the way a fuse works is this is a 5 amp, which means, and actually, if you look on the inside of the filament, you see that thin little backwards S. Maybe if I turn around, then you see an S. Okay, you see an S. Now, you see how thin it is? Now, as you go down, that line gets thicker and thicker thicker that plays a very important role into this so this one right here is a 5 amp that means when the electrical current runs through here exceeds 5 amps that fuse is going to pop boom bam it's going and if you can catch it in slow motion you're going to actually see a little fire in there it'll it'll turn bright and it'll go back <laughs> okay if you notice down here it's thicker this one's 15 so at 15 amps anything over 15 amps this one is going to pop and explode and there's going to be a little fire in it and so on as you can see down to the last one the 30 amp is really thick this is the same principle as battery cables now when the when the manufacturer puts a battery cable in your car they're going to put the cheapest thing the thinnest thing possible as long as it is enough to support the electrical needs of the vehicle they're not going to put anything over so it's in your best interest that if you got to work on a car and you got to change the battery cable make your own and in this video i am going to show you how to make your own and how to use the best things the best material possible so you never because remember that little line in there that represents your battery cable so if you got a thin one and you got a car that uh, uh, now i know you guys some of you guys and girls have seen it sometimes you go to start your car and if there's something wrong if something's drawing a lot it will actually melt the insulation look at that battery cable <laughs> it, it'll actually melt the insulation around it because that thing will get so hot and if you keep going it will cause a fire this is the same kind of principle that's on these fuses so let's put all this to the side and let's get ready to show you how to make the best battery cable ever for your vehicle all right the first thing you want to do is take your cutter you want to put your battery cable in there you want to try to make sure it's even and you want to print down and cut it. These things are great. These things only cost like 17 bucks. You saw how quick that cut it. Look at that cable, man. You never in your life have seen a, a car battery cable that thick. This thing, and if I go to jump anything, no matter what kind of electrical load going through this wire, there's nothing in that car. The only time you're going to see thick cable like this is on electric vehicles because they got to have that kind of current. So... Why cheese out on your car? All right, so we got that done. Put that to the side. Take your battery, your well, end. How do I know where to cut it? Well, when you get your when you get your new cable, it's gonna come like that. It ain't gonna come with that on it. Okay. So you just cut it or start wherever the end of the line is. But how how much do I cut? Well, this part you don't have to worry about. This part you're just gonna put it on. But now you got to figure out where you're putting this cable at. So you say, I'm putting it over here. So you, you kind of measure it. And you always try to give yourself a little bit more than what you actually need. Don't okay. make it stretch. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is figure out the term, the end you're using. You want to put it up to about right there. So you know I'm going to cut it back to about here. So you want to take your razor blade. And you just want to take that razor blade. Make sure it's a nice sharp razor blade. And you want to keep cutting. Oops, I don't want to get out of the camera view. Keep going around. And, and cut that, cut into that sheathing. And then once you get that done, you take your razor blade. And you cut one. Maybe you should cut the other way. Strip down, because I don't want to make sure. Maybe, don't you, but I ain't going to cut myself. Then take your finger. 
and you should be able to pull that right off. Look at that. Man, that is good. Guys, we are almost done. Now, I'm going to stop right here for a minute. Now, at this point, you're going to be doing the other end exactly like this. And this is what you're going to be putting inside your battery terminals. Now, you're going to say, Dayton, this, that thing is big. Ain't no, the battery terminals I see in the store is, is way too small for that. you got to get you some heavy-duty battery cable. Let me see if I got one. I should have one. So, and as you can see, I'm doing right. I'm taking it, and you want to twist it to make sure it's all together. Now, this is another reason why you want to use this cutter and not the, a wire cutter. Because when you use a wire cutter, you'll take them strands and them strands will be coming out. So when you go to try to put this on, it never goes in. The strands will be all sticking out and it'll look kind of crazy. Now, what you want to do now is take your end. You want to go like kind of crooked to the side. Make sure you get everything in there. Push that in. Just like that. Now, like I said, you're gonna need a solid surface now. So a solid surface. So now what we're gonna do is move over to something solid because this has to be on this is gonna be on something solid. Then you're gonna put that into there and you're gonna take a nice sledgehammer and bam hit that thing down. If I do it on this table, the table gonna break. So let's go move over to something solid. Alright, now this part guys, it is very important that you get you a nice solid hammer. Don't get no carpenter's hammer because it's not going to be enough pressure hitting down on this anvil right here. So now it's got a little thing on the side. You want to pick that thing up and pick the thing up right here. So you want to pick that lever up, put your new battery cable in there, and hold it down just like that. Put the end of it just like that. Now, what you're going to do is while it's like that, you're going to take your hammer and you're going to hit this really hard. So you might want to back up a little bit. Like that. And take your thing, pick it back up, pull it out. Look at that. Look at that. Squeeze that thing right in there. Perfect. Now, we are, we are 90% 90, 90 done. The next thing we're going to do is sometimes, now this is really not important guys, but we're going to do this anyway. Sometimes, uh, if, you, if you live in an area that has a lot of moisture, you can't let moisture get down in between though. It's going to cause a lot of corrosion. It's going to start eating that wire from the inside. So that's what we're going to be using our heat, uh, heat shield to go over this. So let's go get that done. Alright guys, now for this video, which this is just for an example. Now when you get your cable, you can get red and black. And you can see this one right here, I cut with a, uh, with a wire cutters and they didn't come out too well compared to that end right there. But you can get black or red. And there, there is black and red um, heat shrinker, heat shrinks. And I could have put a black one here to show this is the black one. Alright, now here is your battery terminal. No. This is the battery terminal you get with a normal car. Now, either it's going to be side posts or, in this case, top posts. But this opening will still be the same. And you're supposed to open it up, put your wire in there, and then crimp those down. And what I like to do is bring them all the way out as far as possible and then put the wire in there. But as you can see, <laughs> that's, you can, I mean, you can probably eventually squeeze it, make some pliers, take some pliers and squeeze it down and try to squeeze it in there. So at that point, what you do is you go and get you, yeah, boy, some heavy duty ones. Look at that. Look at the opening. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I can take those. You loosen them all the way up. And, 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 so you and, could use that in any car, even though it's bigger? Yeah, any car. And actually, these are much better because what happens is you might get a, a body ground like this ground might be going right to the engine but you need a ground going to the body so you can actually stick this in here and put another little wire in there to go to the body this one you can't much do much to all right so you want to open those up as much as possible sometimes what i do I like to just take one off completely measure it out about how much you're going to need 
I'll go about a little bit more right about there and then just like before you go ahead take the razor blade go around and as Sylvia mentioned before a good idea don't cut towards this way cut out this way peel it off you can tell I've been doing this for a long time go around Now, if you're at the vehicle, it's a good idea to have this mounted on the battery post already. And that way it's stationary and not moving. Not, we can't do that right now because it's not. And this is a good way, a better way to show you like this. Set it right there. Set perfect. Pick this end up. Bring it around. Start your other bolt off. Make sure you start off by a couple threads. And then you turn it down. Make sure it's in there. You bring that down as much as you can by hand and usually these bolts are 7 16 on 11 millimeter you hold it in there and you go back and forth bringing them down all the way till it stops There you go, man. That is tight. Look at it squeeze that wire in there. That ain't going nowhere, man. Look at that perfect fit right there. Uh, I mean, okay, and what we'll do, what we're gonna do, guys, is just to show you the comparison of a regular one, we're gonna take you over to a vehicle and do a, a, a thickness comparison test. All right, we're here on a Cadillac CTS. Here is the ground strap going right to the body, right here. That. That, that's the cable right there. Now, look at how it's <laughs> look at the comparison of those two cables. There is no way this 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 is gonna draw too much and cause a fire. Again, I'm gonna let you guys know it is a fire hazard if you have too much amps going through this cable because they will heat up, melt. And they will cause a fire. But if you have something like this, the worst that can happen is that the motor that is going to, in this case, it'll probably be a start or something, the, the thing inside will just burn up. Just quit. Just shut out and quit. Won't be able to do nothing. All right. We have seen vehicles where the car actually started heating up. So, any questions, Sivvy? No. There you go, guys. This is the best battery cable for your vehicle possible. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. Take care, and we will see you on the next tip. Now, first of all, whenever I work on a customer's car and I need to make a battery cable, what I do is make my own. I don't go there and go to autos. I'm not putting down autos on or advancing them, but they got cheap, thin battery cable, and I don't, I don't like it. I need something to hold up to whatever I do. So I, you go online, you want to get you a roll of this. This stuff is pretty cheap. Well, now, after inflation, it might not be, but anyway. If you look in there, this is, you want to get you some 4 slash 0 flex. It's flexible welding cable. This is actually called welding cable. Hold on, give me a little bit. Trying to focus here. Okay. Now, what I like about this is that it's very flexible. So, you can... Now I made this one a ground cable, ground strap for some for one of my uh, trucks, so uh, that's why it's got the ends on it. So it's cool because and, and this thing will hold up to a lot. Actually, um, no, it doesn't say how many old, but it, it does hold up to 500 volts. Cars only 12 volts. So let's get right to it, guys. The next you're gonna need your, you're gonna need you some battery cable. Then you're gonna need you some terminal ends. Now this one is a five. This one is a 516. So the opening. This one is a 3.8, so you get the size that you want to put onto your bolt. Or you can leave it open and put you a new battery terminal on it. Then you're going to need something to cut your cable, but you want to make sure you cut it straight. You don't want to make it crooked or anything. I don't use no uh, wire cutters or anything because they won't cut that thing straight. You want to use something like this. This is going to cut it straight. And this is some cheap stuff, guys. This is on. This is. Now you're going to. I'm telling you, you're going to be using this for a long time for a bunch of other things. Uh, and vehicles. Then you want to get you this this crimper here. This thing is cool right here. Dang, you know, you are showing you how it works because you ain't got it yet. But anyway, the first thing you want to do, guys. Oh, oh, and you want to need this right here. This is a, uh, a heat heat shield, not a heat shield, but.
but uh, what the heck, hey, man? What the heck, that's called, man? <laughs> whatever, whatever. You put it up on the wire, you put some heat to it, and it shrink, heat shrink too. Whatever, put it on the side right there. All right, so we got everything set up, and to use this, you're gonna need you a big sledgehammer. So I gotta, I gotta get that, and but I can't use it on the table. You're gonna need something solid. All right, let's get ready to make our new battery cable. All right, here we go. Get yourself you a, a heating gun, or I've heard people use the, a, a lighter and things that you can use that. I haven't used it, but hey, you can use it. Um, my, these are called heat shrink. That's right, because when you heat it up, it shrinks. So you put it on, put it on right about there. Now, you want to take your gun. Now watch what happens as I start heating this up. See that, Sivvy? You see that? Sivvy, Sivvy likes that. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. All right. Cut it off. Don't touch it. It's going to be hot. It only took up a few seconds. But look at that, guys. Look at that. The perfect cable, man. That thing is bad. No moisture, no water. Anything is going to get in there. This thing will hold. This thing will take so many amp. This thing ain't burning out. The only the only bad side about only bad thing about this is that you gotta go probably change your other one because if any if too much of a, a amp draw comes through something this ain't going away but your other one will but uh that is good now Sylvia had a good question about how do we put the other thing on the on the other side I'm gonna show you the the um, battery terminal on the other side so what I'm gonna do is I gotta set this down somewhere so it's going so what we're gonna do, let's say if you got your cable, you said you already did your processor, this is the positive. Look at that, man. That is cool. All right, so what you're gonna do, take your cutters. You're gonna cut off the other end. Then, take your razor blade, and you're gonna cut it now. Matter of fact, let me go make sure I do have a uh, battery terminal for this.